Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today I will show you how to create this beautiful spline growth effect. Of course, you can animate all the spline and choose the direction you want for your growth. What is great is that we just have to change the place of the editor to have totally different result. I will show you too how to play with the range operator to add detail to your spline. You can of course find this project on my Patreon as always. Okay, let's go. Okay, so I have here my mesh and what I want to do is to create and animate my splines from this point here to this point. So first, I'm going to create a title setup. Open editor. And I create a brush operator. Zero, zero, and one particle. I change the display to sprite to see my particle. And color to white. I want not to stick my particle to the mesh, so I create a position object and I pick my mesh. I deselect my mesh to see the particle and if I want I can play to change where my particle is placed. It's cool but uh, if I want to define precisely where my particle must be I can just add an edit poly on my mesh, select vertice and choose the vertice I want. I can now go back to the position object and for the location select selected vertice. And now you can see that the particle is exactly where I want. Ok perfect. Now that I have the arrival point, I will just create my start particle. So I go to helper, tie flow, and I create a tie icon maybe here. I move it on the mesh, disable the logo, and change the size to sphere. You can, if you want, adjust the scale. Now I will just duplicate the first event, delete the position object, and add a position icon. I can pick my tie icon and change the color. I can up my total of particles and what I want now is to tell to these red particles to find the white particle. So I select my second event that is the red particles event and I'm going to create a set target. And for the target I set from neighbors. So basically what I did is to tell to the particles in the red event to find all the neighbors. The problem is that the red particle will also attract them, so to fix that I will go to target filter and exclude this event. So now they will just find the white particle. I can now just add my proximity radius and save a channel, target 1. Now I want to make the red particles move to the white, so I'm going to create a fine target. And in the point tab, select particle target with a good channel, target 1. And now we can see that the red particles are attracted to the white one. Maybe it's too fast, so I will go to velocity and I set a value of 2. And I up my EZs to have a beautiful slow arrival. Perfect. I create now a spline pass. Create new. We see now the spline pass. I just change the color. And as you can see, we have our splines created by the movement of the particles. So set target is a cool way to tell to a particle group to find another particle or particle group. It's a useful setting. Okay, now we have the movement with the splines, but uh, we want this line to adapt to the shape of our mesh. So to do that, we will uh, create an object bind. Pick the mesh. We see that we don't have attraction anymore, so I'm going to select lock to surface, snap to surface, and decrease the friction to zero. And now, as you can see, we have a beautiful spread animation from a point to another and stick to the mesh. It's a cool effect, but we want some things that feel more the mesh, so I'm going to create a speed operator. You can change the direction if you want, but a random 3D works great. You just have not to play with the magnitude, variation, increase the divergence if you want. Also a noise strength to really completely fill your mesh and create a beautiful animation. What I love to do is to decrease the tie icon radius to emit all the particles from one point. That creates a really beautiful effect in my opinion, but you can do as you want, it depends on what you want to create. Ok, so this setup is perfect for a very clean and linear spline animation, but if you want to add more dumbness in the spline, you can add a force. 
and maybe play with a curl like this change a little the settings maybe another turbulence 0.1 for the strength a little frequency maybe up again you can change the number of your particles yeah it's a beautiful animation what you have to do is play with the speed play with the force you can add variation in the frame target too maybe to create the look you want what is great is that you just have to move your icon to change in life the position where the particles are emitted maybe here beautiful if you want to more fill the mesh you just have to go to the force to the speed and increase all the value maybe the scale the strength beautiful i can just add no my mesh to only see the spline maybe move again my tie icon let's see how it's look yeah it's really cool like this a nice plan growth animation i will show you now another way to add a beautiful growth structure to your spline so i will just decrease my total of particles to two reactivate my mesh and i'm going to create a branch operator you can see here the change i will just duplicate the object bind and the spline pass link this new event to the branch and in the branch operator you have a lot of settings i have here my animation i will just for the moment keep one spline to see better what i do you can decrease the distance if you want to add more branch really decrease the angle divergence to have something closer it's already a beautiful animation like this you can up the count change the velocity and variation just as always adjust the setting to have the look you want maybe like this i can now up my total of particle and see that we have a beautiful growth with branch animation you can of course move your emitter like previously Activate or not the branch operator. Up your total of particles, adjust the force and the speed. It's really up to you to try it by yourself and once you're satisfied with your result, you just have to configure your spline mesh, camera, light and launch the final wonder. Okay, it's over for this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot of things. Don't forget the thumb up and to subscribe to the channel if you like my work. And you can also follow me on Instagram, Beyonce, and support me on Patreon if you want. See you soon for our next tutorial, guys. Bye.